In the 21st century, loneliness has become an epidemic, something akin to leprosy and sometimes referred to as the silent plague. Our current economic and political systems have isolated man from nature, destroyed the small-scale community, and turned us from active participants in a democracy to consumers who are only allowed to express ourselves through financial transactions. This has led to a rise in diseases of despair. Capitalism has endlessly promised people healthier, happier, and more fulfilling lives, but over the last 40 years, the United States has seen a rise in mental illness, divorce rates, stress, alcohol and drug abuse, mass shootings, domestic violence, homelessness, upward mobility, child abuse, hate crimes, and inequality. Karl Marx, who wrote extensively about alienation, described loneliness as not a feeling or a mental condition, but an economic and social condition of a class society, particularly capitalist society. Marx's main argument was that free creative work under one's own control is essential to a sense of empowerment, identity, dignity, and meaning. However, in a capitalist society, human beings are not viewed as people, but rather objects to be manipulated by employers to increase profits. According to Marx, capitalism created four forms of alienation. The alienation of the worker from his product, the alienation of the worker from the act of production, the alienation of the worker from his species essence, and the alienation of the worker from other workers. Albert Einstein, an extremely outspoken socialist, said, The crippling of individuals I consider the worst evil of capitalism. Today, American workers are placed in competition with the global underclass. Employment is a fight to the near death, with a multitude of more and more people chasing fewer and fewer jobs. Americans are literally working themselves to death to enrich the few at the expense of the many. The result is meaningless, undercompensated work with precarious schedules that don't allow us to partake in the planning of, or participation in, social events. Attendance from birthday parties to picnics, sporting events to church functions have all declined. Membership in labor unions, messianic halls, athletic teams, Knights of Columbus, and Rotary Clubs have all decreased as working hours have sharply risen. The unplanned nature of production means its participants are unable to exercise control over it because the market is designed for short-term personal gain at the expense of long-term collective advancement. The more we individually try to get ahead, the more we collectively fall behind. This is mainly due to the fact that the free market does not address externalities. The private capitalist system routinely passes costs onto the public. If it's too expensive to properly dispose of waste, just dump it in the water and let parents pay their child's medical bills. If it costs too much to provide prompt customer service, then just let someone wait on hold for hours on their time. Since the 1920s, there has been a concentrated effort to drive ideas of compassion, loyalty, empathy, and solidarity out of people's heads and get them to focus on the personal pursuit of created wants. The goal, very explicitly stated, was to separate people and turn them into atoms of consumption because an individual cannot carry out meaningful acts of dissent, an individual cannot affect change. In some sense, loneliness is a signal telling you to get back to the tribe. Survival among social mammals is greatly enhanced when they are strongly bonded to the rest of the pack. Once people are isolated, they feel lonely, and when people feel lonely, they develop a hypervigilance, which, from an evolutionary standpoint, would come in handy if you were alone in the savannas of Africa. However, in modern times, it has corrosive social effects. Max Haven writes, We are instructed to see everything of value in our life, from our education to our relationships, to our house, to our community, as assets that can be leveraged for our own personal competitive gain. This has had massively catastrophic social impact on individuals and communities as they reconfigure their imaginations to see society as a hostile and competitive environment. The inability to advance our concerns outside the market, coupled with the loss of power by its transfer into the private sector, leads to a humiliation of the citizenry that fuels loneliness. James Baldwin pointed out that black men don't have midlife crises because people of color understand from an early age how the capitalist system is rigged against them. And though their legitimate rage is being skillfully funneled back into a dying system, white men are now starting to understand this as capitalism continues to cannibalize itself from below. Neoliberalism, privatization, and inequality make citizens mentally and physically ill, and instead of removing the conditions that make people sick, capitalism sells us overpriced drugs that modify our behavior to serve the market instead of the market serving us. 
Capitalism has turned us from active citizens who can work together to affect change to isolated, passive consumers who have no control over our own lives outside the economic system. As the comedian George Carlin said, the things that matter in this country have been reduced in choice. There are two political parties. There's a handful of insurance companies. There are about six or seven information centers. But if you want a bagel, there are 23 flavors because you have the illusion of choice. Capitalism has stripped us of our autonomy by forcing us to follow rigid orders from above that leave us little room to satisfy our very human need for inquiry and creation. The only thing that is required of a human being in a capitalist society is a moderate amount of intelligence and simple obedience. Our lives are in the hands of institutions, be they government or corporate, that are too large and remote for us to influence. Making money for someone takes precedent over social relationships and communal well-being. Every day we are coerced into putting a high value on acquiring money and possessions when what we're really searching for is a connection with each other. The answer lies in the community. All resistance is local. Our current economic crisis is intimately linked with our spiritual crisis, and we are slowly beginning to realize that the market cannot fix the community. The community must fix the market. Author Dave Matthews writes, the social, political, and economic organization of society must be re- con- as a significant contributor to people's mental health with certain social structures being more advantageous to the emergence of mental well-being than others. Capitalism can never offer the conditions most conducive to achieving mental health. Oppression, exploitation, and inequality greatly repress the true realization of what it means to be human. Thanks for watching.